The tales of the Pilica scrub aren't found through a simple Google search, but rather from the quiet murmurs of truck stops in New South Wales. Containing over 5,000 kilometres of woodland in north central New South Wales, it's long been considered evil land by the Aboriginal people of Australia. Like the First Nation people who avoided it, so too have truckers and travellers en route through the scrub. Those who travel through by truck or car report small circular balls of light ranging in white, green, yellow and red colours pursuing them at high speeds through the trees and brush. These balls of light, called Minmin lights, have been sighted long before Australian colonisation. The legend of this phenomenon states those who chase these lights and actually catch one are never seen again. Though strange, they are not as terrifying as the tale of the Peliga Princess, who has been sighted by many travelling through the scrub. The story of the princess goes back to the early 90s. It is said, an Aboriginal woman named Claire Wibson was regularly seen pushing a shopping trolley with her belongings on the Newell Highway, often in complete darkness. It is believed this woman was one of the few First Nation people seen in the area, as many avoided it due to the belief of evil spirits. For years, Claire was known for hitchhiking between two towns, often getting lifts from truckers passing through. There are conflicting stories as to what actually happened to Claire, but all stories result in her death. On one night in 1993, a trucker was said to have been driving down the highway, when suddenly Claire wandered onto the road directly in front of him. By the time his headlights illuminated her frame, it was too late. Claire turned to face the oncoming headlights with a crazed look in her eyes. As the driver slammed his foot on the brakes hoping to avoid hitting her, Claire ran toward the truck in elation, her white hair trailing behind her, and threw herself against the truck. Since that day, many passing through have reported seeing her ghost still pushing her trolley down the highway at night. During my research of this case, I found a forum post of a trucker who came across her before the accident. It reads, What I know about the princess, the princess was thought to have lost it in the city and moved to the bush. She believed her family, especially her two daughters, just wanted money from her. Another theory was she worked on a property around Gunnada and fell pregnant to the boss. After hanging around Bogabri for a while, her baby was taken off her and she snapped. She went to Pilliga and just wandered around. She did have a base camp about 40 kilometers in from the T-section at Coonabarabran. She had the wildest head of white hair you could imagine. She had several friends who were IPAC drivers, which is probably how she got most of her lifts. I met her once, I was having a sleep in my truck at the top of the hill. She banged on my door saying, give me a lift up to my camp. I said, no, let me sleep. She replied with, I want a lift up to my camp, and I was awake by then. I heard the princess would come along to each truck, open the door, get in, and make the driver tailor up to her camp. It's the only place I have ever locked my truck door while I slept. Finally, I have slept in the middle of the Pilliga, knowing the legends and myths of the princess and Yowie and never locked my door. But I am someone who, when going past the radio telescopes outside parks, used to get on both CB radios and ask if anybody out there could hear me, tell them to come and get me, but there's no form of intelligent life down here. Back to the princess, I thought she ran out onto the road to get a lift, but misjudged how close the Stockmaster cattle was, as she ran in front of the truck heading south, waving her arms for the truck heading north. The semi-truck heading south was flat out keeping his engine revs up to get over the hill. It is always very dark at night in the Pilliga. I have found it darker than most places in the territory, so to see her at the last moment, one would have no chances of stopping. I suppose now it adds to the legend of the Pilliga Princess, bless her soul. But this wasn't the only post on the Pilliga Princess or the Pilliga in general. I found a forum with a few more experiences being shared. Today I heard of the Pilliga Princess in the comments on a truck sales website and immediately goosebumps overwhelmed my body. 
Christmas 2017, my son and his mate went for a shoot and camped out about 30 kilometers in the forest northwest of the town of Pilliga. We were all armed with plenty of guns and knives, so I was under the impression we were safe and there was nothing in the forest to fear. When we got to this particular part of the forest, it was late afternoon, and the forest was extraordinarily dry and eerily lifeless. We had only seen one dead pig on the side of the track about 10 kilometers back on the way in, and when we stopped to investigate, there was no telltale signs as to the cause of its demise. We set up camp and the two boys bunked down in the swags on the ground with their guns beside them, and I set up a stretcher and doona on the tray of my ute and hung a tarp on all four pegs on the ute bars to create a tent. The dead silence in the forest was amazing. I had never camped anywhere before where there had been no animal noises at night. So with the shotgun loaded beside me and a huge pig knife in the stretcher, I finally dropped off into a deep sleep at around 11pm as I was buggered from all the driving. I was never a believer in paranormal ghosty crap or any other sort of unexplained phenomenon. So when I was awakened by a woman saying my name in my left ear so vividly that I could feel her breath on the side of my face, you could imagine how startled I was. I could hear noises like somebody was walking around the camp, so I grabbed my knife and threw back the tarp from the ute bars only to be greeted with darkness and sudden silence. I jumped off the back of the ute and ran to the driver's door, opened it and turned the headlights on. Nothing but silence and me standing there covered in goosebumps. I checked on the two boys and they were still asleep, so I sat on the back of the ute for an hour or so in complete darkness. Once I had settled, I went back to sleep and put the whole experience down to maybe a bad dream and after telling the boys what happened, we left the forest the next morning. Now, after stumbling across the stories people have told of the Pilliga, I am not so sure that I dreamt what had happened. I live in the town and Pilliga area you were talking about, and it's freaky at night if you ever go there, you'll notice people like to stay inside at night for that reason. Also, if you go into the Pilliga bush, there is this cave, an old slavery campsite. It is very eerie at certain times at night. You can hear the slaves moaning and crying and screaming, their chains rattling, whistling and singing at night. If you look directly into the cave too long, you can see two glowing red eyes staring back at you. Animals refuse to stay in the area. Even wildlife are scared of the area. If you light a campfire, it won't stay lit for long. It goes out for no reason. You can see chain links in the cave walls. Human bones have been unexpectedly found in there as well. It's not strictly about the princess, but a freaky sort of thing anyway. Around 10 years ago, I was at my friend's uncle's farm, out that way somewhere, not sure exactly where. Anyway, we were riding the quad bikes around the house and having fun, so we decided to take a ride along the track. We rode a good 800 meters away from the house and up this little incline. There was thick trees either side and scrub. On the way back we were slowing down the incline, and on the left, there it goes into a drop into the scrub. But there was a clearing in the trees. The ground was thick scrub, but the trees had a gap of about 6 to 8 meters. But there was one long branch extending the length of it. Now this branch would have only been as thick as a man's forearm, but something caught my eye, and I will remember it till I die. There was this little girl around six years old sitting on the branch, wearing a white dress, white gloves, and a white hat like they wore in the olden days. She was just sitting there. I locked the brakes on my bike and yelled out to my mate to come back, but the girl was gone. He thought I was just talking out of my ass, but it was so freaky, and there's no way any human could have gotten through the trees and thick scrub, nor could a branch so thin hold someone's weight. Even now I still remember it clear as day, but even through research I have never heard or read any weird stories of children dying around that area. Back when we walked through the bushes in 2007, my daughter back then was only four. And in the bushes a fair way up the track, there was a small car on its roof, and it had bullet holes in it, and it was all rusty as if it had been burnt. My daughter bent down near the car, and then turns to us and says, Mummy, help them. 
I couldn't see what she could, and she went on to tell me there was a little girl and her mum, and the mum had a baby in her belly, and the car was on fire, and we needed to help them. The little girl was crying, asking my daughter for help. That's all I can tell you regarding a girl. My daughter described the exact same picture of what you saw. A young girl, four to seven years old. She was sitting in a tree in a long protruding branch, dressed in old English style clothing, all white. She tried showing us even though she was pointing directly at the little girl. Me and two other adults couldn't see anything. It was just getting dark, freaked us out a bit so we took the kids in the house. I used to have a truck that went through the pillager, and no way in hell would you stop. We heard noises like a moaning and groaning, but it was almost like it was on the wind. I woke up and felt this overwhelming sadness that night and wanted to cry. We heard later that she, the pillager princess, had been killed after being hit by a truck. Her story was quite sad. Maybe someone could verify. Story goes that she was once a beautiful woman married to a doctor who left her, and she was left with nothing. She had a breakdown and used to live in humpies along the way. She would return favours for smokes, grog and food. It is said people tried to get her help, but she returned to the pillager. Her spirit is said to remain because she is earthbound due to not finding peace. Very sad if it's true. The area is full of natives who were killed and tossed aside so they roam finding no peace. Regardless, it is a place of very different energy, unlike I have ever felt. One of the most infamous experiences involving the Pillager Scrub is a phone call to a late night radio station where the caller, who refers to himself as Bongo, recounts the experience which he says resulted in him being committed to a mental institute. This is Bongo's call. Good morning, Bongo. Oh, hello there. This is Bongo here. You know, I, I'm at the Happy Day Stay Retreat. Uh, Miss Annie's wake me up and says that they're talking about what happened to me back in 78. That's why I'm here. Where are you exactly? Ha Happy, Day, Happy Day Stay's Retreat, like a sanitarium. Okay. I was bringing a... Uh, a new vehicle down, brand new vehicle down from Ballatta, heading towards Narrabri in 1978. In September it was 78, and heading for Tamworth, and I, I missed the turn off out of Narrabri to go to the Gunnedah, and I kept going. I didn't know where I was going, and I saw these old mileage pegs on the side of the road they'd been like painted over in those days and I thought the engraver in it was a G like for Gunnedah but in actual fact they were a C for turned out to be Coonda Barabra right okay and about halfway along the road sort of thing I started to get a bit concerned the fuel was running pretty low and in the distance I, I, I saw a what turned out to be a, in those days a telecom beam heading my way. So I got out and I waved him down. It was pretty late in the afternoon, not just, just before dusk it was. Anyway, he pulled up and I, he cracked the window down just to pry it a little bit. And I said, look, I don't know where I am. Can you tell me where I am, mate? And, and he said, yeah, he said, yeah. Yeah, you're in the middle of the pillar. Do you, do you know where that is? I said, no, never heard of it. He said, what's your problem? I said, I'm nearly out of fuel. I'm, what, where, what? Can you tell me where I can get some fuel? He said, you're about the equal distance from here to Coonabarram and Narrabri. It wouldn't matter. Anyway, I said, oh, I'm nearly out of fuel. I'd never get back. I anyway asked him whether he was, he was going to Narrabri and asked him whether... He could ring the NRMA or when he got there or something to bring me out some fuel as I was a member. Yeah. And he said, oh, you won't get anyone to come out here after dark. And anyway, he didn't he didn't explain why, but... Right. Anyway, I, so you were, you were stuck I there? I was staying in this big old four-wheel drive all through the night and about, well, half past three, quarter to four. Um, 
this thing just fair started to rock and, and and all these funny weird lights and that would get in around the outside and I looked out and what looked through the window at me is while well, I'm in this state today he made he, he, he pulled the door off it off the off the hinges and it, it, this this thing like a, it's it 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 should the it, it, explanation of what a, it looked like it, it was it was horrific and it it, it 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 took me through the bush a fair way. So it grabbed and, hold of you. And and and, and we we ended up at this I, I, I suppose you'd call it a, a, a humpy sort of a thing and, and and this thing had this thing had a real fetish obviously for. Oh, real thin, bow-legged, knock kneed white, hairy legs. He had pairs of legs hanging up, and and when he realised that I, I, I was no good to him, he, he 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 took me back. He took me back to the edge of the road, whatever it was. I assume it was a he. If it was a she, there's something wrong in the world. But uh, and, well, well, and bongo, I, bongo. I, I never ever. I saw him again, and 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 a timber truck picked picked me up the, the next morning when it went through, and he he took me to Kuna Barabin, and it wasn't long after that I they made me stay at Happy Happy Days Happy Days Day Retreat, and I, I I've been here ever since. Bongo, that is just an amazing story. And Miss Any, and Miss Any tells me apparently that there's some idiot out there in the middle of it somewhere last week or something or something attempting fate could uh, there's got to be something wrong with the person can you give us a if i don't can't not pushing you too hard what, what did it look like <laughs> i can't explain it it was horrible Pretty scary story there, Bongo, and thank you for that. Oh. And you look after yourself, OK? I'm going to pass your concerns on to Trev, who is our roving reporter, uh, Trevor Chappell and Anna Mulder, who we've got out there in the Pillar Scrub tonight. Bongo, thanks for your call, all right? You look after. Oh, bye, Neil. Now, the institute that Bongo refers to can't be verified. It doesn't seem to exist, but the emotion in his voice leads me to believe whether real or not, he believes the story he's telling. I can't say whether these events are fact or fiction, and it's up to you to discern. But I for one won't be visiting the Pilliga Scrub anytime soon.